We get to be here and be alive, so why not enjoy every single moment? Growing up, I went to church. I was like church youth group leader, president, and I had a faith, like I've always had faith. And somewhere along the line, I lost my faith in God and Jesus, but I still had a faith in, I call it the universe. So, you know, you do good things, good things happen to you. And so that faith was always there. So I've always been into fashion. Like, I love clothes. When I was younger, I used to talk to my clothes. So somewhere along the line, I figured out I wanted to do um, styling. And I worked with somebody who worked with an athlete. And from there, I met Dwayne Wade. And I started working with Dwayne Wade. So I found this niche that was not, like, there were athletes, they needed to be dressed, but nobody was dressing them. And that's how I started working with athletes. Callie-Ann is a force of nature. At my company, we did a deal with Dwayne, and Callie Ann was kind of the driving force behind that. So as part of working with Dwayne, I worked with Callie Ann quite a bit, actually, over the past five years. With styling and most industry jobs, it's a very, very fast-paced life. You're in it, you're partying, you're going out, you're drinking. When she walks in a room, everyone knows who Callie is um, because she just attracts people and she's super fun. Callie Ann's the life of the party and all the things that come with being the life of the party and that fast-paced lifestyle, Callie Ann was definitely a part of. So we were at a, um, a retreat for Dwayne Wade and everyone's out drinking. We have drinks in our hands. I look over at Clark and I'm like, Clark, why aren't you drinking? And he says, well, it's part of my faith. We don't drink. And so it kind of was like, but you're fun, but you're not drinking. And I need to know more about this. And I said, oh, I'm, you know, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is one of the things we believe. And it was kind of in passing for a little while on like, oh, okay, that's weird or that's cute. <laughs> you know, like, it's not what I do, but okay, Clark, that's fine. You know, as I started to get to know him, like I looked at how he lived his life with his family and how, although he had all of this other stuff going on, his family was the most important. And you don't see that a lot today. Like. I have a great family. My family is we're very family oriented, but I could feel that something was missing. So on my way to Mykonos, I had Usain Bolt, one of my clients, and Dwayne, both of them, at in Mykonos at the same time. I was flying there. My flight was delayed. I had a choice between getting my stuff, um, all of my luggage, and making or leaving it there and making my connecting flight. I chose my stuff. Of course, I missed my connecting flight. So I'm walking through the Athens airport, like boohoo tears. Like, I can't believe I chose all of this stuff over being there for my clients. And I started to realize like, there was something that like, I had started to build this prison for myself. I just, I realized like, I need to change. And I said, as soon as I get back to Miami, I'm clearing everything out, I'm doing a full cleaning. I'm gonna quit drinking. So about two or three months after she decided to stop drinking, she said, okay, Clark, tell me about this religion thing. And I'm like, you really wanna know? She's like, yeah, just start from the start, tell me about the religion thing. And so he's telling me, you know, he's telling me about Joseph Smith and how he goes into a grove. And then he goes on about these plates. And it's not like, whoa, 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 wait. So you're gonna tell me that you, this practical person, believes that some guy found these gold plates that has all of this, this book written on it. She looks at me and says, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I was like, well, oh, that didn't go <laughs> quite as I planned. And finally, I was like, you know what, Clark? I, I wanna know, I wanna read this book because you believe in it so much. I'm here, like, we're discussing this. I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna prove you wrong because that's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy questioning everything and proving people wrong. So I said, give me your book, let me read it, and we'll see what happens at the end. <laughs> so I gave her the Book of Mormon, and you know, two or three weeks later, I get a text that says, okay, Clark, questions about the Book of Mormon. I said, great, you're doing what you said you were going to do, you're reading, good job. And so we have this text string going along on Callie's questions about the Book of Mormon. And for the first, you know, two to three weeks, it is like rough. Like every time 
the phone buzzes with a question from Callie. I'm like, oh boy, and I'll show my wife. And Callie's like, good luck with that one. I started reading it and there's a lot of scripture or text in there that come off very racist. So that was a lot of our argument. I have a whole, like my whole back of my book is just as many times as it's like, it refers to, you know, the curse of, of blackness and this, their skin became white. And so I was arguing with him. I'm like, how can there be this religion and it's like faith in God, but yet there's so much text in it that just feels like you're alienating a whole group of people. Like this is, for me as a black person, you're telling me, you know, that I'm cursed. <laughs> I think about three weeks into it, I'm like, you know what, Callie, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Just give it back to me. Thanks for trying. This is, this is clearly not gonna work. And she just laughed and said, nope, I said I'm gonna read it, so I'm gonna keep plowing ahead. And that night I read um, 2 Nephi 26, 33. For none of these inequities come of the Lord, for he doeth that which is good among the children of men, and he doeth nothing save it be plain unto the children of men. And he invited them all to come unto him and partake of his goodness. And he denieth none that come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female. And he remembereth the heathen, and all are alike unto God both Jew and Gentile. And so it was that moment right there was, it, it was like an aha moment. So here I'd been arguing, you know, racism. And, you know, we we're talking about inequities and all that I did. And it's like, God loves everybody, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter what you've done, God loves everybody based on the questions she'd be asking me, the conversations we were having, I knew that 2 Nephi 27 would be good for her. And I'm on my way to pick up some supplies for a party, and I start reading it, but I start to cry. And I was like, you know, it's like, okay, I can't, I can't read it right now. Let me, let me finish doing what I'm doing. I get in the U-Haul and I start crying uncontrollably. I hadn't even finished reading what Clark had given me yet to read, and I'm crying uncontrollably and I'm trying to get back to my office, which is 10 blocks away. I mean, a drive I've done several times, and I keep hitting detours, and I hear this voice in my head, and it's like, okay, you can either believe or you can continue to be a skeptic. And I finally get to my office, and as I'm texting Clark, I'm like, Clark, I have a decision to make. I can either believe or I can continue to be a skeptic. And as I said it, it just, I stopped crying, and it all made sense to me. So Callie sends me this picture and her eyes are a little puffy. And then she sends me another picture and I can tell she'd been crying. And underneath she says, my Jesus is real face in quotes. And I think it's just the culmination of all these feelings that she'd had while reading the Book of Mormon. And it just hit her like Jesus Christ is real. And she starts flying through the Book of Mormon. By the time she hits Alma 1, I can't keep up with her. It's like, I don't know, probably between five and 10 chapters a day. And Alma is her homeboy, as she says. She fell in love with Alma. And by the time she got through Alma, I think she's starting to ask, okay, so what, what happens next? I said, well, you should come to church. And so she started kind of making sure trips to California would be on weekends so that she could start coming to church with us. And one of the Sundays that she came to church, I was leading the Sunday service, and it was a service where anybody can come up and give their testimony of Jesus Christ. And I was going up to close the meeting, and I see Callie-Ann walking up to the pulpit to speak to this audience of 350 people. And she comes up and she just gives the sweetest testimony of the Book of Mormon and how it's allowed her to realize that Jesus Christ is real. For anybody who has read the Book of Mormon, you, you, start, fe you start feeling something. Something's there, something's missing, you need something more. So I text him and I was like, I think something's missing. He said the Holy Ghost. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm ready to get baptized. Seeing her journey, 
and the things in her life that she had changed even up to that point and the other things that she is willing to change. That right there is the power of the Book of Mormon and credit to her for realizing that's what was missing. I asked everybody to come in all white and everybody abided. <laughs> it's very, I think, angelic. It's just one of those experiences that you chalk up that you'll never forget, like joy at 100. It's like, I can start all over again. You feel love and you feel a forgiveness and you, you feel, you feel uh, a happiness and a peace in you. It's, it's just really a, a renewal of your life. It's like being born again. Like it, it sounds so cliche, but it really, really is. It's, it's a fresh start. The entire experience was amazing. Callianne wanted to share her faith at the baptism. You know, I'm not here to convert or bring so many people on. Like, that's not why I share it. I just share it because this is what I'm living through, and I hope that anyone who may be wavering their faith can go back in and find, like, read the book. Just go, just pick up a few chapters, and I'm, and, and just start reading. Just start reading, and it'll, I'm pretty sure that there will be something that will speak to you that will help reaffirm, help confirm that this is true. Like, and God loves you. He's here for you. Just believe and see what happens.